As photographers living and traveling full-time in a motorhome, Paul Cannon and I, Grace Grogan, are always on the lookout for scenic places to stay. We decided to check out the BLM land in Blythe, California. What we discovered is the land at the Midland Long-Term Visitor Area is remote and not overly scenic, but the location has an interesting history. Near the entrance, we spotted this monument, which tells the story of a military operation that took place in the desert areas of California, Nevada, and Arizona. We are going to share the story of Desert Strike with you. In May 1964, U.S. Strike Command, Strikem, launched the largest military war game since World War II, known as Joint Exercise Desert Strike. This two-week training exercise simulated a nuclear air and ground battle between the mythical governments of Nizona and Colonia over water rights within the Colorado River watershed. This was south of Las Vegas. Two joint task forces, Mojave and Phoenix, involving 100,000 U.S. Army and Air Force personnel and utilizing over 900 aircraft and 500 tanks were mobilized to fight for their respective governments. An important training innovation was the creation of an official war cabinet for each country to lend realism to the games and introduce a political dimension to the escalation of nuclear war, requiring judgments about when nuclear or chemical weapons should be used. On May 25, 1964, the 1st Battalion Tomahawks, under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Robert S. Dixon of the 501st Geronimo Parachute Infantry Regiment, 101st Airborne Division Screaming Eagles were parachuted 30 miles behind enemy lines near this vicinity, fulfilling their Desert Strike mission. They seized a critical pass held by enemy armor units. An umpire halted the exercise shortly after contact with the enemy was made. Desert Strike also led to new tactics for military river crossing on the nuclear battlefield. When Nizona invaded Colonia, instead of using a single concentrated troop crossing across the Colorado River, new tactics required numerous crossings along a broad front to diminish the effects of a theater-wide nuclear detonation. This training maneuver took place on more than 13 million acres of public and private lands in the California, Nevada, and Arizona deserts at a cost of $54 million or $540 per man. The monument does not show the equivalency of funds in 2020 for the operation which would be $451,337,225.81, an increase of 735.8% in 56 years. This monument is dedicated to the Cold War veterans who served there and especially for the 32 warriors who gave their lives during this exercise, which in itself contributed to their end of the Cold War. Our research revealed discrepancies and indicated 1,000 tanks, 780 aircraft, plus an additional 7,000 land vehicles were involved. This command flow information was found in the Art University Review of Exercise Desert Strike. We were unable to locate names or further details on 32 soldiers who died, other than that the majority died in traffic accidents during preparations for the operation. Seven died in a single truck crash near Danbury, California. Two soldiers drowned near a pontoon bridge crossing the river near Blythe, California. One soldier died when an armored personnel carrier drove off a 15-foot embankment near Searchlight, Nevada. And two soldiers died while in their sleeping bags near Parker, Arizona when a tank ran over them. We hope you enjoyed learning about the Desert Strike Command. There is a wide amount of information online about this important military operation and our resources are listed here. 
Paul and I thank you for watching. If you enjoy learning about interesting areas through the United States and Canada, we invite you to subscribe to Rolling Through North America Travel With Us. Hit that notification bell so you know each time a new video is published. Give us a thumbs up and leave us your comments below. If you like learning about history, we invite you to check out our Rolling Through Mortero Wash where we share information about the Impossible Railroad and our Rolling Through Cape Breton Island where we visit historic Fort Petrie. Check back often because we want you to travel with us.